Hello Grade 12s, welcome to today's lesson on maps and distances. Have you ever wondered what it takes to prepare for a trip? In our country we have different transport routes to the same destination. We have bus routes, train routes and routes for private vehicles. Planning a private trip is very different from planning a trip for a group of people. If people travel in groups, they'll be able to get discounts and entrance fees and be able to hire a bus for the transport. Now that we know the distance, let's go to Mrs. Kaula and her class as they discuss the other things we need to know to calculate the cost of going on a school trip. Mrs. Wesleyna Kaula is teaching a lesson on the mathematics of a school trip. First, she asks the learners to come up with all the things you would need to think of when planning a school trip. Okay, I think we must check the distance and compare the prices and how much we're going to pay for the buses. And how much each learner is going to pay for the entrance. We must check the number of learners that are going to go to the place. I think the time, what time do you want to get there? Right. So we Wesleyna points out that for most of the preparations that you have to do to plan a school trip, you have to use maths That's literacy. All. I like us to concentrate on things that has the mathematical implication. In other words, uh, where the numbers are also involved. The distance. You're saying the distance? I think it would be the amount of transport. The amount, it means we're going to use the amount. And what else? Where the mathematical implication is involved? The time that are we going to and when are we going to return? The entrance fee. Oh. The learners compare the entrance fees for two possible places to visit a zoo or an archaeological site. So we'd like you to calculate the total cost for the zoo as well as for the archaeological site. Find out which trip will have the cheapest entry fees. Now I'd like to know uh, how much it's the school going to pay for the archaeological site, okay? Okay, for the archaeological site, learners are equals to 115, and the teachers are three, and then but the buses are two, and there is no charge for the buses to pay. And learners plus teachers is equals to 118, and 118 multiplied by 20 is equals to 2,360. You said you have multiplied number of people by 20. Why have you chose to multiply by 20? Yeah, people there who are more than 100, who are more than 100 will pay 20 rent. Now we need to calculate the total cost for the zoo. Um, um, firstly, uh, we multiply 24 rent is for the adults, and we have three adults, which is the teachers, ma'am. So we multiply three with 24 rent. For our learners, it's nine rent for a group. We have 115 learners. We're going to say 115 learners multiply by nine. And then after that, for pegging, we have two buses. For pegging, for one bus, it takes us uh, 35 rents. So for two buses, it's going to give us 70 rents. So the total amount is 1,177. Why didn't you choose to multiply by 16 for the, for the learners? Uh, because when you're going alone, you're going to pay 16 rand, and then we are going there as learners, and learners is 9 rand for a group each. We have the total cost for the two trips. And which one will you recommend? I will recommend the zoo because as it is much uh, less expensive, and the archaeological site is much more expensive. Next, Wesleyna asked the learners to draw some graphs that will help them to instantaneously compare four different bus companies and their rates. First, the learners have to write an equation for the cost of hiring a bus if they travel a distance shorter than the free kilometers offered. Company one, the minimum cost is equal to 900 feet. If you have to travel a distance equal to 100 kilometers or less for 10 rand per kilometer. How much are they going to charge us if we have to travel 60 kilometers? 950, man. Why? Uh, because 60 kilometers is less than uh, 100 kilometers, and the company charges uh, 950 for 
100 kilometers and less. If x, if x is less than 100, our y will be equal to 910 feet. Now the learners have to draw their findings on a graph since the company will only charge a minimum cost if you travel less than the free distance. This part of the graph should be a horizontal line at the minimum cost. The most difficult part is to understand that each bus company has a fixed rate up until a certain distance. So it doesn't matter how many kilometers you travel, as long as those kilometers are less than their fixed amount, the minimum distance, then this charge is going to be the same for the outing. The learners show their results on the board. This one is a straight line because for so many kilometers, the amount is still the same. For 400 kilometers, the amount, which is 950, will stay there, same. Next, the learners draw up an equation if they travel more than the free distance on the day. We have this equation. If y is greater than 100, then the equation for y will be 10, which is 10 rand per kilometer, it's company number one, into x. What is that x? The distance that they're going to travel. And we're going to subtract 100 because it's a free distance. And don't forget, every time we need to add the minimum cost. The learners plot their results on the graph. This part of each graph is a straight line at an angle to the horizontal axis. The learners should notice that the line graphs have different gradients and that they cross each other at different points. This means that if one company was cheaper over a certain distance, it may not be if you travel further. The, the graphs all eventually slope up to the right-hand side. So the line of graph that is on top, sloping up to the right, is the more expensive. And now I'd like you to check, Wesleyna asks the learners about traveling various distances and which bus company they would choose for each of these school trips. Company one. So at least we have calculated or we have drawn the graph for different companies. So if you have to use one of the companies, you can easily go into your graph and check how much you are going to pay. The class identified different costs to going on school trips. These costs included parking fees, entrance fees, and the cost of hiring buses. The graph showed how different distances affected the hiring cost of the buses. If we plan a private trip, we need to do a different set of calculations. Let's compare traveling from Johannesburg to Durban by train and by car. We will compare the time and cost factors of both in a table. We need to find the distance of both journeys, the time spent sitting in the train or car, the cost of the trip and the total duration of the trip. Let's start by looking at the trip by train. This map shows the route the train will take. The route is roughly 568 kilometers. And here is the timetable and the fees for the trip. We can see that the trip will take 14 hours and a single trip which includes food for one adult is 1050 rand. The total trip takes two days. Now let's put this data into our table. 
The distance is 568 kilometers. The time spent in the train is 14 hours. The cost, including food, is 1,050 rand. The total duration of the trip is two days. This is a long time to spend traveling. I'm sure we could get there in a shorter time period by car, but is it cheaper? We'll have to do a couple of calculations to determine this. To start, this is a distance chart and shows the distance between towns and cities in South Africa. To find the distance of the trip, we read down from Durban and from Johannesburg, we read to the left. The point at which they cross is a total distance of 598 kilometers. This trip map uses the N2 to get from Johannesburg to Durban. It shows the distance as 689 kilometers. A strip map is not an accurate representation of the route, but it shows the main stop points on the route and it shows the distance between each stop. This map shows a different route which covers a total distance of 557 kilometers. Can you see how the route is more detailed? It shows how the road curves and gives a clearer idea of the route. These three different sources have given us three different distances. Why do you think this has happened? It could be that each has used a different route for the journey, or that they have different starting and ending points on the route. For the rest of the lesson, we'll assume that the distance between the two cities is 557 kilometers. We fill this into the table. We now need to calculate the time spent. To calculate the time taken, we need to know the speed at which the car travels. The formula used to calculate time is distance traveled divided by the speed at which the car travels. Let's assume the car travels at a minimum speed of 100 kilometers per hour. How long will it take this car to reach its destination? Time is equal to 557 kilometers divided by 100 kilometers per hour. This is equal to 5,57 hours. We can round off this value to the nearest hour. This gives the estimated time to be approximately 6 hours. We fill this into the table. Can we assume that the duration of the trip is also 6 hours? It's recommended for drivers to take regular breaks on road trips. They should stop once every 2 hours and stretch their legs. So let's assume that this driver will take many breaks and that the trip will take the whole day. So far, Taking the car looks a lot more attractive. Let's calculate the cost. Running cost of a car depends on the age of the car, the number of kilometers on the odometer, and the size of the engine. The formula to calculate the running cost of cents per kilometer is the petrol factor A multiplied by the petrol price plus B, the service and repair cost, plus C, tire cost. For this trip, the running cost sent per kilometers is equal to 7,4 multiplied by 13 rand 78 cents plus 17,18 plus 8,98. This gives us 128,132 cents. We divide our answer by 100 to change from cents to rand. The answer is 1 rand 28 cents per kilometer. Let us calculate the total running cost for the distance of 557 kilometers. Total running cost is equal to the distance 557 kilometers multiplied with the cost per kilometer 1 rand 28 cents. The answer is 712 rand and 19 cents. Let's put this into the table. When we look at the final table, we will see that the car is cheaper and takes a shorter time. It is important to note that the train includes food and a train trip might be a bit of an adventure for some people. Now that you've learned more about planning a trip, it's time for you to try the task video at the end of this series. You can also find more resources at our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us Grade 12s. Goodbye.